I can't understand why a Republican-controlled House would voluntarily fund the destruction of America. The House of Representatives, and I normally don't cover spending issues like this, but it's important, has uh, passed a $1.2 trillion bill that will fund the government um, completely with the last bill they've passed. So in total, the government will be funded completely through the end of September. And the bill that was passed today included funding for the Department of Homeland Security, the Defense Department, I think the State Department, I think 70% of the agency or federal funding more or less. And it was a thousand page bill. Uh, it was released uh, just a, a minute ago, practically speaking, and meaning that no members had any serious, uh, uh, any serious opportunity to review it. And uh, it was passed as a result of uh, a minority of Republicans working with virtually every Democrat. I think we have the final vote tally here. Do we have it from C-SPAN? And uh, it's caught, well, here we are. So you can see the blues are Democrats voted with the minority of Republicans to pass it over the majority of Republicans voting with a small number of Democrats. It fully funds the Biden border invasion. It supports abortion, transgender extremism, DEI. Now, of course, there have been some policy changes, some increased changes in terms of extra beds at the border, woefully insufficient. Extra border patrol agents, woefully insufficient, especially if their job is to let them in. And uh, it's been a significant blowback. I've been talking about this for months. Uh, I talked about it at C-SPAN as to, I, I can't understand why a Republican controlled house would voluntarily fund the destruction of America. Let's, let's go to that C-SPAN clip. It's hard to imagine why a Republican controlled house of representatives would authorize one more dime in taxpayer money for the DOJ FBI machine. In fact, it's hard to imagine why any House Republican would keep on funding the border invasion, the abuse of Trump, the censorship of Americans, the killing of the unborn, the transgender extremist abuse of our children, and the crazed critical race theory, DEI, in the Biden administration, especially in our military. Defund it all! I don't know about you, but a government shutdown would be well worth it if it means the end of Biden's border invasion. Yeah, well, the crowd liked that. And uh, unfortunately, Speaker Johnson has done the wrong thing. I think he's made wrong decisions in this regard. I don't understand, especially given all of the uh, news this week about what went on in, in the uh, at Texas with a, a, a violent incursion. We'll talk about that in a, in a few minutes. Uh, but I don't see a distinction between Speaker Johnson on the spending issues and Speaker McCarthy. And, and I hate to say this, but it, it's, it's, uh, things haven't changed at all in many respects. I was at a press conference with uh, some conservative House Republicans several months ago during the Speaker uh, uh, Speaker McCarthy administration when he was running the House, you know, raising concerns about then a continuing resolution. It's the same principle, you know, basically more government money to fund the worst of what Biden is doing. And this is what I had to say. I'm Tom Fitton. I'm president of Judicial Watch, America's leading government watchdog organization. Uh, we have a simple request for Congress, do your job. It's not enough to do investigations and reports. We need to stop the government corruption and abuse uh, that is so concerning to the American people. Uh, in this new budget fight, or basically the old budget fight that we're being asked to pretend is new, uh, the, there's an inflection point. Are we going to continue to fund Republicans in the House the wild abuse by the Biden administration of its political opponents, the mass censorship of tens of millions of Americans, the border invasion we've heard so much about, and the other wild abuses of power that are right now fully funded with Congress. And I don't know what we're talking about with a clean CR. I see a dirty CR, a CR that will fund the worst, the dirty politics and corruption in our federal government. 
and there's a positive moral obligation right now, not next year, but right now, to stop the abuses, the effort to jail Trump on pretextual, unprecedented charges in a way never seen before in American history. An obligation to stop right now the Biden administration censorship of tens of millions of Americans. The obligation to stop right now the illicit use of tax monies to fund abortions in our military and elsewhere. The uh, right, we need to stop right now the attack on children through the promotion of transgender extremism. We need to stop right now the lack of serious investigation into the Biden administration corruption, specifically Biden corruption. We need a Justice Department or a special counsel that has confidence of the American people. All of these issues can be addressed in this continuing resolution. And if they don't want to address it, that suggests to me those who, for, for, who vote for it are on the side of corruption and those who oppose it are on the side of justice. Thank you very much. I agree with me. And things haven't changed. I mean, it's just kind of the same argument, different bill. But since then, they did vote to fund all of that. I think three or four times. Republican-controlled House, even under Speaker Johnson. And in my view, it's inexcusable. Now, it goes to the Senate this weekend. It may be passing as I speak. I don't know. So it's never too late to call. And of course, these fights will come up again even before September 30th in the context of other legislation that's passed because there are always ways to kind of make these issues um, uh, make these issues something that the members in the House or the Senate have to vote on, whether it be uh, the uh, closing off the border, uh, protecting our kids, you name it. And so I, I think you should continue and right now call your members of Congress, even if it's passed, call your members of Congress, share your views about what they should do in the future and how you think they did in the past. Now, Speaker Johnson facing a big fight, and I, I, I think highly of Speaker Johnson personally in the sense that he's a, he's a great conservative. He comes from the conservative movement. He used to work, many of you may not know this, for uh, Alliance Defending Freedom. I don't think it was called then, but back then, but it was ADF was a famous uh, one of our uh, a group I greatly admire that does great First Amendment uh, work on behalf of, behalf of Christians. And uh, Mike was a, a great lawyer who worked for them. And you know, so a conservative movement lawyer who's now Speaker of the House. So in many ways, it's extraordinary. But on the other hand, it's disappointing that he's kind of made these choices uh, not to stand and fight on at least one key issue. As I said in my speech at CPAC that you saw, I mean, maybe just pick something to fight over. Say, you know what? We've got this fight coming up in the next few months about whether to fund DHS, the Department of Homeland Security, or other agencies. And I just can't imagine being able to vote for that if it means involved, if it means including money uh, to help aliens invade the United States of America. And so, uh, even though I know all the conservatives on the Hill like Mike Johnson, he's now losing support, and who knows, maybe there'll be another speaker. Uh, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, the conservative congresswoman, uh, is filed a motion, just as we speak almost, uh, to vacate the chair. I think we have a, it's a pretty simple motion. I don't know if you can read it at the bottom there. I, be, I can't read it at the bottom. I've got to walk closer to the screen. Resolved that the Office of Speaker of the House of Representatives is hereby declared to be vacant. Now, I'm not quite sure what the um, uh, what the process is going to be from here, whether it will be considered or when it will be considered. But the point being, uh, you know, conservatives are very upset about the way things are going on Capitol Hill, especially given the crisis. And Marjorie Taylor Greene talked to our friends over at One American News about this, and uh, we have a clip of her remarks. Mike Johnson brought part two of an omnibus to the bill 
to the House floor this morning and for forced all of us to vote on a bill that would fund abortion uh, up until full term, that doesn't do anything to secure our border. This is not what Republicans support. We don't want to vote, vote for a bill that funds those type of things that are against our values in order to fund our military. That shouldn't be the choice that Republicans were put in. However, that's what Speaker Johnson did to our entire conference today. I put in the motion to vacate uh, respectfully. This is not a personal attack against Mike Johnson at all. I respect him completely. Yeah, you know, when you're talking about who should be a leader, it, it's, ne it's not necessarily like, a, in my view, I may be naive in talking about it this way, it's not the person, right? In term, that's how I kind of approach these issues. You know, reporters will sometimes ask me in Judicial Watch, you know, who should so-and-so should pick to be X? And I don't, you know, I don't know. But my view is, what should be the approach or what you should look for in who you pick to be a leader or to advance your goals if they're an official in an administration? And the approach should be, in my view, taking leadership on these core issues, recognizing the threat to our republic caused by this invasion, caused by the abuses of Trump, caused by the abuses of our children, the censorship of Americans, and say, there's something there that I'm never going to fund and I'm willing to shut the government down over unless it's stopped. And let the chips fall where they may, because our country is at risk. That's what we need from the Speaker. And maybe Speaker Johnson will get his head uh, together in that regard and provide leadership there. But one of the reasons he's facing challenges from folks like Marjorie Taylor Greene and other members of the House Freedom Caucus is because of his failure to take those leadership steps, however good he is on these other issues. And this crisis isn't going away. Let's, let's look to see, uh, with the, I, don't, I hope you've seen the video of what went on in Texas this week. I mean, this is, this is absolute insanity. Chaos caused by uh, the invasion aided and embedded of these United States by the President of the United States, Joe Biden. And look at these four, four folks, law enforcement personnel in Texas, facing this violent, violent invasion. And the response from the Republican-controlled House is to fund the policies that lead to this. Look at that. Now, it's been reported since this video has come out that all of those folks who assaulted our personnel, our American citizen personnel there, were processed by the Biden administration. And I tell you, if they go to certain cities, if they go here to Washington, D.C., for instance, they'll be able to vote, maybe even run for mayor. The left wants them to be able to vote. Indeed, they can vote in many local election elections across the country. Fully funded by the, by the uh, Republican-controlled House. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like our video down below.